Well, here's Ross, the man who could have been boss. Ross Perot is right here. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. How are you, Phil? Good to see you. Holy cow. Well, nice haircut. Um, okay, if you, all right, let the record show who brought it up, will you? And you all understand that Jay Leno was the first one of the truly beautiful people like Phil who freaked out wanting a haircut like mine. And uh, as Paul Harvey would say, and now for the rest of the story. Uh, you will be talking with David Frost uh, on he, Friday he, night this week. It was a great opportunity. He's going to change his Well, mind. we got so much to do here, Ross. But uh, could I take one second? By all means, please go ahead. Now, Phil, can we agree that Phil's success is because he's very sensitive to his audience? Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Okay, let's, okay. How many of you think Phil would look a whole lot better with a haircut just like mine? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. That's it. That's it. Oh! oh. oh we know who they're loyal to now, don't they we? They do. They saved you, Phil. Now, Jay Leno's audience turned on him. I was prepared to bring the barber in and really have Phil looking good for you, but well, next time, next time we'll do it. Okay. Now, let's get serious. Well, I just bought this, so I... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Perot, sir, uh, to David Frost on Friday night this week, PBS, you say, among other things, if you were interviewing him, meaning President Clinton, for your company, and you had a medium-sized company, you wouldn't consider giving him a job anywhere above middle management. Then he goes on. Yeah, it does. Uh, no, but the point... And when... Well, just one other. Okay. And when you've got a movie star in the White House every night, and you've got somebody up there from Hollywood pleading the case for the Dalai Lama, the average hard-working American, American in work clothes can't relate to that. Now, let me just uh, take me First a second off, here. Wait a minute. Go Sk ahead. You're skipping all the Perot around. hits classic, front page Classic Washington. out of context here. I'll straighten you out in a minute. Uh, it is true. <laughs> I have to give you, know, you this. Okay, I have to give you this. You're bouncing around on me, Phil. You said he was bright. No, I said, look, he is very bright. He has a very high energy level. My big concern is we can't afford to have damage occur to this country now while we have a new president whose experience has been li limited to being governor of Arkansas, who's got the toughest job in the world, who has an impulse to try to have 50 things going at once, while he has a staff that has very little experience, with a few exceptions, and he has not filled hundreds of his appointed positions. My concern is that the last thing we want is more damage to occur to our country while they're getting organized. And what I'm trying to say is get organized, get focused, set your priorities, and do a few things well as opposed to just going all over the map and creating damage. Now, we okay. can... I don't want to interrupt, but they've already shot this for me, sir. Uh, Perot hits Arkansas way. This is front page Thursday, Washington Post. Clinton is called starstruck middle manager. You're the one that called him that. I hear you, uh, Mr. No, but now, wait a minute. I, you, I didn't call him a starstruck metal manager. You have to go through about six pages to create that, say. <clears throat> well, but you did it, say he no, couldn't I be... said those words in different places. I said, for example, I think the question that David asked me later on is, you know, having to do with the celebrities and what have you, and I'm basically saying, you know, you need to focus on the nation's work and get it done. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to make sure we don't do significant damage before we get organized. Can he get organized? Yes. Is he bright enough to learn? Yes. Let me give you an analogy. I've got a really good friend who's incredibly bright who decides he wants to be an F-16 pilot and has never flown. And I find him in the cockpit getting ready to go down the runway. And I beg him to go to simulator training and flight school first. Now, that's all I'm trying to do because this country will pay a huge burden if we splatter these things all over the place. Now, you pick one, anyone you want. His tax plan, it's a mess. His government reform plan is a sham. Does anybody in this room think the Deficit Reduction Trust firm, uh, Fund is anything? No, I've talked to thousands of people. I can't find any grown adult who thinks the Deficit Reduction Trust Fund is anything except whitewash that confuse us. You just go across the different programs and Pick the one you want, Phil. We'll talk about it. 
And I can show you why if we rush ahead like we are, it will hurt our country. If we take our time and do it right, yeah. we can make things better. That's, that's what we all want. Once again, <clears throat> referring here at Thursday's Washington Post, just another failed presidency? Okay, but see... Well, here's... My, let, me, let me just ask you this. That's not my position. Now, wait, you make it clear. That's not my position. Well, but position. when you say the man can't ascend beyond middle management, when you, uh, you know, when you accuse him... Uh, it, it, Ross, Phil, he, you I didn't appear say to be... He, here's, let me just ask I this question. I didn't say that. I said if I were to hire him now and want to... <laughs> keep in mind, you wouldn't let me do brain surgery on you. I don't know how. You wouldn't let me be your lawyer. I don't know how. We've put him in the toughest, most demanding job in the world, and they're racing forward at warp speed before they get organized and before they have their plans nailed down. Now then, I'm your... Let me put it down on really simple terms. Don't most of your friends that you know, haven't they refinanced their mortgages to take advantage of the lower long-term rates? Yeah. Guess what the new administration is doing? They're taking the bonds that mature that were long-term and financing them short term while interest rates are in the floor to create the illusion of a deficit reduction. If interest rates start going up with over 70% of our $4 trillion debt financed five years or less, every time interest rates go up 1%, and this is before they add to that pile, the debt will increase $28 billion a year. Now, these are the things I'm talking about. Can you learn that that's a mistake? Sure. What do you need? A little time? You need good people around you? All I'm trying to do, now I'm not a part of this article. This is, this is unrelated to me. That's some writer in the Washington Post. We don't, we can't, can we agree, we can't afford a failed presidency. We can't afford to wait four years. We need things done right now. We've got to build bipartisan coalitions. Right now, it's a object of manhood and womanhood for the Democrats to try to ram their programs through over the Republicans and for the Republicans to try to stop them. The only thing that will work, see, the best minds in the Congress on debt reduction just happen to be Republicans. They won't even listen to them. I'm begging them. I say, these guys know how to cut costs. They've got great plans. You won't even give their bills a hearing. Kasich in the House from Ohio, Domenici from New Mexico in the Senate, two of the best, and uh, Senator Boren. Uh, came up with a great new idea. He had a bipartisan group with that new bill that put more emphasis on cutting spending. How many people here just want a tax increase for fun? Cutting spending yes. on the people who can least afford the oh, cutting of the spending. Oh, come on. And yeah. also uh, against the energy tax. Incidentally, you, your, your plan at one time called for a 50 cent gallon tax on gasoline now, Phil, did it not if you're going to i have the feeling you don't respect my questions at no, all I, love it. I, I mean you come out here and you just want to speak ross no, wait a minute ross, no, no, I, you no, you're the king it's your it's your it's show not, i'm not the king but you know i am an insecure guy and if you know and i and i like to get on television and i'd like to just uh, you it, you I are turning this into an info commercial no uh, can I, we take the 50 cent gas thing did you not propose a 50 cent tax on Well, here's what I would appreciate. If you're going to tell the audience what I proposed, I would like you to tell them accurately. Well, I, I am, I'm about to hand you the ball. No, Ross. no, 10 cents a year over five years, it finally gets to 50 cents. That's a big difference. Yeah. Then we need to compare that with all the other industrialized countries in the world and show that we will still be at the bottom of the industrialized countries around the world in terms of taxes. I don't find then, this to be an irresponsible suggestion, Ross. Then we go to the debates when someone said, are you absolutely fixated on the gas? I said, no, we're looking for the best ideas. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Let's not get locked on BTU or gasoline. Let's get the best minds in the House and Senate, form a coalition. Well, now you're going to back up and you don't want to talk about this 10 cents a day. No, I do. Well, what's wrong? In other words, if, if, you, if you think it might be a good idea to assess a 10 cent a gallon tax accumulating to 50 cents over five years, yes. what's wrong with the BTU tax, which is part of the well, president's proposal? The what's wrong with tax. that? And why can't he have your influence and your big guns out there helping him get this passed, Boren and other oil states? Let me people. give you an example. He was on the road in Ohio. Right. Help the man. Well, help the man. Help, help him you're a Navy man. If you are if you get hit amidship, you're going to rally around your captain, Wait your minute. admiral. You're going to help him. It, it, you can, you set yourself up, Ross, for appearing to be piling on, for appearing to be helping what appears to be a media 
that is panicking. We can't wait to report this apocalyptic stuff. The president is broken. The presidency, just another. We got already Dole going to New Hampshire. May, we got a suggestion that Ross is getting ready for 96. Hey, we got three and a half more years. The man's been in office for 120 days. I got to tell you, I'd have got a haircut on that airplane. I really would have. And it never would have occurred to me that this thing would become uh, uh, something that we don't have enough ink to report on. The, the president, in my opinion, is getting an awful lot of unfair, unfair scrutiny by the press. And we're looking for a proud American like Ross Perot to step up to the plate and say, this country is more important than the media's fixation on these minor issues. And I stand by my president. Avoid saying things like that he can't, he couldn't be promoted past middle management. I didn't say that. If you were interviewing well, him for your company I, and you had a medium-sized company, you wouldn't consider him giving him a job anywhere above middle management. But you said I, that. I didn't say I wouldn't promote him. Now, you get... <laughs> no, but say, no. No, the point is, my point is, you'd bring him in, train him, and then, with his good mind and his energy, he might run the company 15 or 20 years from now. But the point is, he, you'd have, he'd have to learn. Now, he's learning on the job. Phil, you can't ask me... Now, for example, he was on the road in Ohio. And he said, get the American people to help to publicly. I need the American people's help to get rid of foreign lobbyists. There are no bills to get rid of foreign lobbyists. He hasn't done a thing to get rid of foreign lobbyists. Now, if he will ever lay a bill on the table to get rid of foreign lobbyists, we'll rally millions of people behind him. If he will put together a bipartisan coalition to work out a real solid plan yeah. that pays down the deficit. This is, this is the goal of the American people. Yes. We'll pay more taxes to pay down the deficit, balance the budget, and put the country right. in the black. Okay. Now, if he'll put together a bipartisan coalition and do it in a logical, rational way, we will rally everybody we can and I will be leading the charge. Same way with government you, reform. Will you give him some specifics on where, where the cut should be? Sure. I'm going to ask you some specifics and I bet you're going to say you're not sure you'd want to study it. Well, Let me give you one. No, wait. Let me give you one. No, I'll tell you. I, I, let me give you one. I'll tell you that in advance, probably. You will okay. want to see. You, you'd be great in Washington because you just throw it out there and vote on it. Oh, well, so. wait a minute. I, but I, we are entitled to know where you would cut. Just give you one. Real easy. Real easy. You ready? If you're really going to squirm, know, I got one that's no. going to spin your head. It's all oh, wait in a minute. Book. It's Hang in on. The book. I'll sell a book. I'll sell you a book. Here we go. You ready? This one. Watch this. Oh, you talk about on the ropes. Cancel the V-22 Osprey vertical takeoff and landing. It's too expensive. We've already spent $30 billion. It's certainly not energy conservative. It's, we've already lost one in a tragic accident that killed some very, very skilled, disciplined people that we committed a lot of our public funds to train. The machine is impractical. We've already spent $30 billion on it. Ross, step up to the plate. Tell the American people, you're a military guy. You have impeccable military credentials. We don't need this damn thing. Let's cut it. Let's start there. Cut the V-2 Osprey helicopter, vertical takeoff and landing, Boeing airframe manufactured weapons yeah, instrument. Okay. Tell them you don't want it. Tell them you don't want it. Tell them. It's not going to save the world, but it's a start. It's a start. What you see here is the way Washington operates. <laughs> now, here is what you need to do. You need to make a list of things, including uh, all these different things that you read about, like the V-22. Yeah. Then you need to make a rational priority list of which is most important to our country. And those who don't make the, the cut are gone. But and not just come out with an emotional appeal. I don't know that much about the I knew you were going to say that, Ross. Well, okay. Well, but now, you've got to step up to the plate. You have a responsibility to the it. president. If you're going to knew all about it, then, and I knew where it fit on the priority list, I could give you an answer. Would you freeze coal as on Social Security? Yes. Next. I'd put cola back in a can and make it a soft drink. All those, all those proud Americans, 65 and older, worked hard all their lives. Now you're going to penalize them. No. No, no. First place I'd want to freeze it is on Congress's pay and on Congress's retirement. Uh, now, I'll, I'll now. give you a chance. You have more time to say whatever you want. I got a break. We are still a commercial program. I get Ross. one minute for your ten. Just okay. like EDS. That's right, your program. And we'll be back with Ross Perot in New York City in just a moment. Great. Thank you.
extraordinary light can rob your milk of essential vitamins and good taste. Within just 24 hours, light can destroy a significant amount of the riboflavin in low-fat milk and steal even more of the added vitamin A. But paper cartons block out harmful light and protect your milk. And recycling of cartons is growing. Paper cartons block light out, keep vitamins in. I don't vacation in the south of France, don't really care about high finance. I leave town when I get the chance. I go simple, I go easy, I go greyhound. Leave the car home and leave the driving to us, because we've cut our fares to thousands of places. No strings attached. I go simple. Sunday and Monday, the hottest summer values are here during the two-day Memorial Weekend Save at Schottenstein. Famous Maker Deluxe Smoker Grill, not $55, only $19.99. Four Beast Stainless Steel Tool Set, not $20, only $5.99. Famous Maker Cabana Stripe Beach Towels and Canvas Beach Totes, not $10 to $14, your choice, $4.99. This waterproof pool radio, not $25, only $9.99. Shop all day Sunday, plus special hours Monday 10 to 6 during the two-day Memorial Weekend Sale at all Schottenstein's locations. It's kind of funny if you're sitting at a restaurant and you go, what would you do if your parents embarrassed you like this? Oh, my God. On the next Mari, meet kids of all ages who can't take their parents anywhere. It's genetic that she aggravates us, and it's genetic that we embarrass her. Meet the shapely mom. She has a hard time keeping her clothes on. It's the main thing. And the dad whose best friend is plastic. Although she's a blow up doll, she's expensive to buy clothes for. Embarrassed by their parents on the next Mari. The Mari Povich Show, today at 10 on 6 on your side. To be part of the audience, please send a postcard to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. I, I don't want to get into an argument with Mr. Perot. I'll be interested to hear what his specifics are, but I, I would... You, you go back and read his book and his plan. There's a remarkable uh, convergence, except that the, we have more specific budget cuts. We raise taxes less on the middle class and more on the wealthy. I will ask you to, uh, to apply the same level of scrutiny to him as you do to me. And, uh, you know, if he's changed his position from the positions he took in the campaign last year, then we need to know why and what his ideas are. All right. There you go, Ross. All right, can I finish, COLA? Sure. See, Congress salaries are adjusted by COLA. Congress' retirement plans are adjusted by COLA. There is no incentive on the part of our elected servants to keep the dollar strong because they're protected when the dollar weakens. You and I are not. This is the reason I think we ought to put COLA back in a can. Now, how many of you have $2 million retirement plans? Nobody. 93 members of Congress do, all protected by COLA. Now, these are things that need to be cleaned up and... Uh, government reform. Nobody wants to touch that. We, the people do. Got a live American citizen back there. Yes, Mr. Perot, this political philosophy of yours and economic philosophy isn't new. You've espoused this during the entire campaign. Why didn't you win? Well, first of all, he didn't run. Uh, well, uh, well, well there, no, you the, did run. My apologies to you. He did, he did it, he didn't, and then he did. Well, is the American people, is it that the American people are not listening to you or they don't believe what you're saying is accurate? I, I, well, you take a poll on that, but the facts are, you know, you, the people voted for their choice. There's millions of people in our organization who feel very strongly that the people should have a voice in government and that right now the lobbyists and the special interests have the voice. There are hundreds of thousands of examples of that. Now, I love this point the president made in the intermission where he said our programs are similar. See if you can put this on the camera. Is Hold that it right up there. We'll do it. Like that? Yeah. See? Yeah. My plan balanced the budget in 1998, and we went into the black. Clinton's plan never did during the campaign. His new plan never does. That last 15% must have made the difference. Now, the facts are, uh, there, it, it, he is, his is a tax and spend plan rather than a balance the budget and pay down the debt plan. Uh, if that's 15%, that's where it is. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, uh, here, show them the polls, uh, Brian. You're moving up, uh, Ross, but... That doesn't matter. I well, uh, you were talking about... Uh, uh, here is uh, the president's uh, plummeting approval ratings, and then no, show him number 31 next. We have Ross Perot. 
Uh, look at this. Uh, Pro, Ross Pro's moved up to 26. His 1992 vote was 19. Um, Clinton from 43 to 38. Yes. Um, well, you keep saying how you think that Clinton has a lot to learn and that, you know, he doesn't really know as much as he should. If he was sitting in front of you right now, what would you teach him? What do you think that you could give him, like one specific thing that he should know that you think you know more than he does about? Well, I... You know. First, first, when you're $4 trillion in debt, money is a particularly critical item. The ability to fund and pay that debt assumes that millions and millions of Americans have a job. As you look at the Mexican trade agreement and you look at the 58 cents an hour minimum wage in Mexico and compare it to the $4.25 minimum wage in the United States plus uh, all of the other benefits, health care, retirement, so on and so forth, that are paid here, you'll realize if you pass that Mexican agreement, you're going to cause additional losses of jobs in the United States at a critical time. That, if I could just say one thing, I would say don't damage the tax base now. And if I could say two things, I would say organize. You know, get your staff, get your team together. If you're going to play football, you need 11 guys that know how. Get them out there, get them on the field, get them organized, get a game plan and then set priorities, and then start marching across. But keep in mind, the critical resource every step of the way is money. Now, in our country, they haven't faced that yet. See, in the campaign, he said there would be no tax increase for the health care program. Now it's up to $150 billion a year, and nobody's tried to rationalize what's different. Now, that's the kind of thing... You, see, you, we can't take a $150 billion a year hit on health care and at the same time open up Mexico at 58 cents an hour with no health care. Every big company in the country with a factory will go to Mexico and escape that burden. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It all ties together. That's yeah. what I would try to communicate. Yeah. Now, you've had some very negative things to say about the health care proposal, and uh, the First Lady has not even released her task force's report. Um, I'm not sure what your grievance is uh, about a report which has not been yet released. Would you like to know? <laughs> yes. Okay, here it is. I come, let's come into practical terms. I come to you and say, look, I have a house here I'd like to sell you, and it's a beautiful picture. And you say, Ross, that's terrific. Where is it located? I say, I haven't bought a lot. I say, well, come back when you got a lot, right? And I come back with this. I say, I bought the lot. The house cost you $200,000. You say, Ross, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, does it have a kitchen, does it, uh, you know, gas, electricity, air conditioning? I say, I haven't worked it out. You say, come back when you get it worked out. In other words, they don't have a detailed plan yet. They admit they don't have a detailed plan yet, and yet they're throwing out all these answers. Nobody that's ever put together complex programs and made them work would do it in this way. This thing is more complex than putting a man on the moon. That followed the laws of physics. Healthcare is that follows a lot of social implications and what have you. It can devastate this country if it's done wrong. Step one is to put together a plan. Well, they have. The Clinton health care package provides as basic benefits, this is number 40, prescription drugs, long-term care, abortion, mental illness, how it will be obtained, regional purchasing pools, you know about this, this is so-called managed competition, health security cards would be distributed to everybody, who will be covered, all citizens and legal residents, illegal aliens entitled to emergency care, that's only the humane thing to do, we don't want to throw a guy out of the emergency room because he doesn't have a green card, cost estimated 30 to 90 billion dollars a year, how to pay, payroll taxes, look at this, how's this for responsibility, 2% for workers, 7% for employees, and we're going to tax all those sinners who are into tobacco and alcohol. Now, come on, uh, Ross, this is specific. This no, no, is, oh, you're, no. you're, you're sitting there saying they don't have a plan. Okay, They're now I've got trying. this young middle manager that's just joined me, all right? And he comes in with that. He comes in with that and said, I said, well, what does it cost? He says, 30 to $90 billion a year, and next week I'm going to tell you it's $150 billion. I'd say, son, go back, get yourself organized. You're still at the artist sketch level. Get down to the detailed plan so you can tell me what it will cost. And then, see, those are all concepts, Phil. Those are not details. Those are nice concepts, but now you've got to go down to the blocking and tackling. You know, yes, this is like do. saying, I'm going to win the Super Bowl, but then I say, how? You've got to have a game plan. You've got to have plays. You've got to have it all worked out. That's not done, and we're pricing it every other day, and it wasn't supposed to cost us anything. Phil, does that bother you that it costs $150 billion now? It wasn't supposed to cost anything? 
Well, you're already at, you're going to, next year you're going to spend a trillion dollars on health care. No, no, and no, we no, have now the new. most ambitious effort in the history of the, of, since Hippocrates, trying to fix this. Why wouldn't Hillary Rodham Clinton have at least your enthusiastic support she of her would, conscientious would... effort along with a lot of other proud Americans and before you drop your bombs on this thing take a look at well, it let's wait till it comes it out Fine. look at it all right now yeah you say uh, why yeah. bring it up okay. here's why we're it. bringing it up now we can't afford a 150 billion dollar year mistake we're saying let's have Yo. a detailed plan that's why we're bringing <laughs> it up now yeah. excuse me mr pro yes it, it seems to me like you talk one way when it, uh, when it pertains to you. For example, you said that it takes him much too long to get started. And, well, it's only been 100 days. And on the other hand, you're telling him that he should hurry up and get started. No. You know, he should wait and maybe he should get his players in line. But at the same time, he should have already had his players in line. No, I Why didn't don't you say help that. him out and help this country out and stand behind your president? I'll give you a chance to answer this question in just a moment. This is a test. This station is conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. The broadcasters in your area, in voluntary cooperation with federal, state, and local authorities, have developed this system to keep you informed in the event of an emergency. If this had been an actual emergency, the attention signal you just heard would have been followed by official information, news, or instructions. This station serves the central Ohio area. This concludes this test of the emergency broadcast system. We have a, a quality commitment to our customers that um, I think is second to none. Uh, we went to a couple other places and they didn't particularly seem interested in dealing with us. So uh, we stopped at uh, Duke Masheter's and they were more than happy to try to set up a deal and, and work within our finance. I don't think uh, good service, dependability, and people you know uh, ever get out of style. Our friend Dick Masheter. <laughs> Belltone, America's most trusted name in hearing aids. The biggest surprise I had when I got my Belltones was that I was able to hear more clearly and that they were comfortable. Well, if I meet somebody that needs a hearing aid or should needs an improvement in their hearing, I tell them that they ought to go to Belltone like I did and, and get a hearing aid. You too can experience the benefits of a Belltone. Call us today for your free hearing test. How are you? Sure. Good to yeah. see you. Excuse me. <laughs> the question is on the on the motion. You want me to sit here? Well, you can stand. You can no, sit. No, no. Can... They just kept moving everything around. Next I thing I know, you'll be chair. you'll be hosting this show. You Good know. Morning. Go ahead. The woman asked you. The woman makes the point that. Uh... But the point. Uh, when did I say he should do more sooner? I haven't said that. I'm saying be very careful. Follow the old carpenter saying. Measure twice, cut once. When did you get the impression I said that he should do more quickly? Well, at the very beginning, you said that, you know, he ha he's had all this time and he hasn't really come together with his programs yet. And, and the health care issue, I mean, Solomon is it because Hillary Rodman Clinton is the one who's drafting it? No, no, no. It's the, they, it's the way it's being done. No, Mrs. Clinton is terribly bright, has very little experience in health care, but she's very bright. And, but here, let me give you an example. For example, they threw out yesterday that they're going to stop the profits, you know, really drive down the profits in health care, which will have the impact of driving down and controlling the income of physicians. Now, in a rational society, if we're going to start regulating people's incomes, should we also start regulating lawyers' incomes to drive down the cost of legal fees? You see? Now, now... Oh, here's one. Should we regulate the incomes of rock stars and movie stars so that tickets are cheaper and we can see more concerts and movies? Now, you know, my point is, 
once you start down that trail, where do you stop? And once you decide that you're going to tell doctors what they have to specialize in, say, if I wanted to be a brain surgeon and my government could tell me I had to be a general practitioner, does that sound like our country to you? No. For example, I could just say, forget it all and go be a lawyer, right? Anybody smart enough to be a lawyer, a doctor can be a lawyer and make more money. I suggest to you that doctors contribute more to society than lawyers, and I'm not demeaning lawyers. Just, just a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, and would you be, would you be uh, up to uh, standing up and saying that COLA should be frozen on all labor contracts that might have been negotiated with COLA as a feature of future compensation? In other words, if we're going to stop the cost of living increase for Social Security recipients, should we likewise stop the cost of living increase for the UAW, uh, the steel workers, and other blue-collar folks? Here's what I suggest, that if you stop the free ride for Congress on their salaries and on their retirement, then they will put discipline in the dollar. Kohler should be an abstract thing. The dollar should not deteriorate. A 1950 dollar bill is worth 18 cents today because of the mismanagement of our country. What you could have bought for a dollar in 1950, will only, you can only have 18 cents in buying power today. Yeah. It, this COLA mentality is we're all protected from irresponsibility. Okay. We need discipline around spending everywhere we can put it. Yeah. Um, Ross, I have always, I was very, very impressed with the courage of uh, your position, for example, on the Persian Gulf War. You were a no-nonsense, uh, right straight ahead critic. Yes of this war, you warned us about it, uh, and it's really hard now to uh, stand up and beat our chest on that uh, one. We still have Saddam prancing around uh, Baghdad, and an awful lot of people died. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would ask the same honesty in the following question. Ronald Reagan promised to cut taxes and cut government. And what he did was cut taxes and borrow more money than any other person in the history of banking. And now we are left with the debt. Do we have your agreement that this was a hayride we were on in the 80s, where all of us were led to feel good because we didn't have to pay the price while he was borrowing for the build the B-1 bomber and a whole bunch of people got jobs, and now here we are with a debt that you yourself, the debt, just the service on the debt, is, is, is killing. It Everybody disallows entrepreneurial spirit and small business uh, birth. Yeah. I ask you, sir, yes. Ronald Reagan's voodoo economics is the major cause of the agonies that we suffer today in the economy. Have True you? or false? I think I've already said that a thousand times, Phil. I think you got true. those lines from me. The answer is, Trickle-down economics didn't trickle. The excesses of the 80s were inexcusable. I said it at the time. I spoke all over the country against the junk bond deals, the leverage buyout deals, all the things that were getting the banks and savings and loans in trouble. I spoke about uh, dealing with the banking and savings and loan problem, and Washington wouldn't touch it until they got all the PAC money from the savings and loan crooks for the 1988 election. I don't know how many times I've gotten into the watch my lips, no new taxes, and the tax and budget summit that was a con on the American people. Now, before you, you know, with Boy Scout and Girl Scout idealism, lunge for another tax increase, study that one. You were told you wouldn't have to pay any by Bush. Watch my lips. Then it came up in 91, they said, if you'll do it, we'll balance the budget, pay down the debt, and live happily ever after. In fact, that year, they increased spending $1.83 for every new dollar of taxes. And since that time, the expenses in the House and Senate, where they promised to cut costs, are up somewhere between 35 and 55% depending on the category. That's our government in action because there is no discipline on spending. And until we put discipline on spending with a balanced budget amendment, a line item veto, now the president wants it, we'll turn out an army backing him on that, but we won't turn out for this sham deal that Congress wants, and that is with rescission. That means it's kind of a nothing line item veto. We'd like for him to be able to go in, peel off pork, and drop it in the street. You'd like that too. We'll back real stuff, we won't back shams. And we'll be back in a moment. Are these Tetley people off their rocker? Do they really believe their roundy caffeinated tea tastes as good as my regular tea? 
Well, Pearly, these round bags have 29% more tea than your favorite decaf. Oh, well, I'm 29% more impressed. What about the taste, Mother? You never know it's decaf. <gasps> what about the shape? The shape. Why is it round? She always did ask too many questions. Mommy says to clean in proper order. Glasses, silverware, dishes, then pans. Or greasy. Mommy never says you, Daddy. Because Dawn cleans the greasiest grease. Dawn breaks it up and takes it away. Oh, no, we forgot a glass and the water's all greasy. What are we going to do? Let's do what Mommy would do. See? The glass isn't greasy. Neither are my hands. It goes there. And I thought your mother was tough. Dawn takes grease out of your way. Listen to what homeowners have to say about their home equity loans from Centennial Mortgage Company. I called them on a Wednesday, and exactly two weeks later, I stood here with the check in my hand. Unbelievable. <laughs> Other banks couldn't help, but Centennial did. They're great people to do business with. No matter what you need the money for, or what your credit or income, call Centennial now. Thank you, Centennial. Thank you, Centennial. Thank you, Centennial. If you're finished with your sports equipment, don't throw it away. Bring it into Play It Again Sports and we'll buy it from you. Dad wanted his funeral to be simple. No fuss, no bother. To be honest, I don't know that I could have handled all the fuss either. But I couldn't just let him go. The Trust 100 funeral director from my civic group answered all our questions and helped us arrange exactly what we wanted. <laughs> we felt like we were part of his family. See your yellow pages for the family-owned Trust 100 funeral home nearest you. Trust 100. They're family. <laughs> crazy. I'm okay. crazy for some... I, this audience wants me to sing the whole thing, but we don't have time. Uh... Uh, Ross Perot, sir, you are the subject of uh, Thursday and Friday two-part Nightline piece, which explores United We Stand. We are now, uh, uh, we, as we tape this program on a Thursday, I do not have the uh, benefit of having reviewed the material. However, it, is, uh, uh, it, it does not take a rocket scientist to know that the thrust of these reports will suggest, and uh, how well they do it uh, remains to be seen, Nightline, Thursday and Friday night, suggesting that United We Stand is not a bottom-up organization. It's a top-down organization. You have only three men on United We Stand board, you, your son-in-law, and your accountant. Why is not the board larger? Um, uh, how do you feel about those uh, people who supported you and see this? Dictatorial probably is too strong a word. But you do have a kind of military oversight of this organization, uh, which belies the populist notion that you sell in your speeches. I ask you, Ross Perot. Well, first, we had millions of people come together a year ago, and they organized themselves and voted their leaders at the grassroots level across the country. And during the process of the campaign, as you probably wouldn't be too surprised, some of these leaders the people felt were not doing a good job and at the local level some of these leaders were replaced and then some of these people got their feelings hurt and I regret every single case and in every single case where I have a specific I have spent time personally on it to find out exactly what the problem is and make sure that problem doesn't occur again we have about six people who starting last October would go from television show to television show as being people who weren't happy and I sincerely regret every single case where, for one reason or another, they didn't get along with their local people. Now, what we're doing now, we start all over after the campaign. All the members wanted to build a long-term organization. They understand exactly what we're doing. These six people that appear on television repeatedly uh, are all talking about their past experiences, which I regret if they had any, you know, stress with their peers at the local level, and I guess they did. 
we're building a local organization from the bottom up. It takes time to do it. We're in midstream now. We hope to have it done by September. At the meantime, every penny that's come in is sitting in the bank. Not a penny's been spent. And once we are organized from the bottom up and we have all our local leaders and our state leaders across the country, at that point, they will come together, they will set the budgets, they will set the priorities, and so on and so forth. They all clearly understand that we're in a bridge period now to get there. And I regret this problem, but I suggest that if you f attempt to find six unhappy people in any group where there are millions, like the Democrats or Republicans, you could find six unhappy people. I wish we had none, and any time it pops up, it gets a great deal of attention to make sure that this is, in fact, a bottoms-up organization. We're building it now, Phil. Rome is not built in a day. It takes a little time to get the it all The president might want to say the same country. thing to you. Right. <laughs> well, but, but, no, no, I hope, Phil, I hope he will. That's what I'm saying. Take your time and do it right. Mm -hmm. I'm urging him to do what we're trying to do, and that is don't rush it so fast right. that you make huge multi-hundred right. billion dollar mistakes that we have to pay for. With hands in the air here, just one more. Give me just a couple seconds here. Uh, do I understand that you hope to have 10,000 United We Stand registrants per congressional district? Isn't that a goal? Uh, that would be... That'd be a nice mean, goal. That would be a, a minimum goal. Really? Yeah. So, uh, uh, let's assume uh, you get 10,000 United We Stand registrants, uh, honest, proud Americans who believe in what you're saying and perhaps are thinking about a third party and so on. No. You, you're, all right, you're going to say no, uh, no and, are, and you're going to say you're going to wait and see. Not. No, we don't. We, we just want the problems dealt with. Oh, thought, we okay. want the people to have a voice. Right. Don't uh, recast what we are, please. Uh, but, uh, well, I'm not. I'm, I'm going fishing here. Uh, <laughs> do, do, for, the, for, the, for the 94 uh, congressional elections, uh, would you sell your lists? No. You won't sell your lists to challengers in whose uh, philosophy and political vision you agree in various... No, 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 no. If you could, you know, you could, you could offset no, the incumbency okay. advantage if you did this. No, we won't sell our list. Now, let's assume that somebody that that congressional district feels is the best candidate, uh, wanted access to the list, then basically I think our philosophy would be we'd do the mailing because once you turn the list over... Oh, you would list, do the mailing? Just do the mailing at cost for them, but you don't give, you don't turn your list over to people who might turn around and sell it to a sporting goods store. Uh, well, I, I know. see. This is interesting. See, so once you have ten thousand names, they're worth money, right? Uh -huh. uh, so that if we've got an incumbent in the House, for example, who will be up for election next November, a year from this November, right. November of '94. Uh, and you clearly see him as a tax and spend liberal right. Democrat, and I come along, hard as this may be to, for you to believe, and I'm your conservative, no-nonsense guy who believes in a grassroots America, and I've supported you, and I've sent you my $15, and I'm saying to your organization, hey, guys, I want to knock this tax and spend liberal off. You will, will you give me, a, in my behalf, you will send supportive literature to the constituents of my district, whom I hope to represent in Congress, knocking off the incumbent. Is that I right? I need to find the word you. Me? me? Will, will, you, will you cooperate you, with me no, on that? No, no, no. No, I don't. This would be decided by the people in that congressional district. But if they decided, yes, we All want right, to... Now, these are the members. This is right. bottoms up. The members said this right. is the person... Now, do I have to pay strong. for this mailing? You would have to pay the cost of it, the true cost, with no burdens. So you'd be like a broker then, no, of providing no, me. No, all we're doing is just handling it because we don't want to give you the list, so that you you might sell it for all I you know. Right. You you can sell it okay. to some magazine. That's interesting. To get That's subscriptions. Very good. Will you uh, will you expand your board, Ross? Yes. Yes. Because that three will all be on done. No, but excuse me, we're, we're putting it all together now. When we get our state leaders selected, you're over a year old. United we stand. No. What's taken we so started long? in January, all over again. And we'll be back now, in just a moment. Starting, we had to all start right. all over. Hang on a minute. Hi, I'm Mark Thurston of TK Constructors, and the excitement is building. Can you imagine building a new home, the one you thought you could never afford today? Well, today, TK can build you a new three-bedroom brick home with standard features like central heating and air, Anderson vinyl clad windows, fireplace, and vaulted ceilings with skylight. A new home with more amenities than you can imagine. All for $47.5. Can you not afford to call TK? The excitement is building. Call 1-800-TK-TK-FYI. 
great glasses. Thanks. Everyone likes my glasses, but they weigh a ton. You don't have to put up with heavy glasses anymore. Because at LensCrafters, we have so many new ways to make glasses more comfortable. Introducing LensCrafters exclusive featherweights. So much lighter, so much slimmer, and oh so comfortable. Featherweights for that cushion of comfort you've always wanted. I never knew glasses could be this comfortable. LensCrafters now has lower prices for better value. I think men and women should share household chores. Don't you? I cook, and my husband, Bill, does the dishes. He's terrific at it. He always scrapes plates, and he never, ever overloads. No matter who does the dishes, Cascade does the dirty work. Other leading brands can leave spots so your dishes look dirty. Cascade with sheeting action gets them so clean they're virtually spotless. Perfect! Mm, just like you, my little love. Harry! Harry! You promised we were going to go shopping for a new sofa. Harry! Shop the Sofa Express Memorial Weekend Sale. Store-wide discounts with no down payment and no interest for six months. Why wait? Harry? Harry, can you hear me? For a transcript of Donahue, send $3 to Journal Graphics, 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203. Or call 303-831-9000. To order a video cassette for only $24.95, just call 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. We're going to get a set of record here, sir. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Perot has been quite uh, loquacious about what everybody else is doing wrong, and he's been quite funny. I'd like to hear something specific from him I, about what he would do in terms of health care reform, specifically, and how he would finance it. Wow. Phil, if you will bring me back for an hour and give me the whole hour, I will show up with charts. I cannot answer that question. You said we have five minutes. If I could do one thing right now in government, I would make sure we didn't rush ahead on the Mexican trade agreement. Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on NBC, 7 p.m. Central and Mountain, and 8 p.m. Pacific, we'll have a 30-minute show on the Mexican trade agreement, and I hope you'll all take the time to watch it because right. millions of jobs are at stake. Right. Mr. And I'm Pro, sorry I can't answer that Mr. Pro, I am compelled to say... Go ahead. ...that if we have already these long, protracted, dedicated, honest efforts to become specific regarding fixing our health care problem, which if we don't, the whole neighborhood is going to fall down. And if you give yourself permission to come on this program or anybody else's program and totally, totally destroy uh, this health care uh, proposal, which has not been even released, it's not a manly thing to do that and then to respond to this man's question by saying you need an hour in order All to right, be... Well, give him one now, specific minute, answer. Wait, 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 Hillary Clinton now, wait, is entitled to that. Now, yeah. Yeah. what you just, let's assume I'm walking by the Empire State Building, I see Phil getting ready to bungee jump and the cord's not tied to his ankles. You're saying I shouldn't say, Phil, don't jump until you tie the cord to your ankles. I mean, what I'm saying here, you can only do this if you do it in a logical, rational way. The way it's being developed now... The way it's being developed now, where you're throwing no tax increases, $90 billion a year, $150 billion a year, and we still just have a concept, is in a, is a disorderly way to, that will develop a plan that will be disruptive, cost the taxpayers hundreds of billions of dollars, we'll say oops, and we'll start all over again. We could do this in a careful, rational way, and then I have begged them from day one, I'll give you a sound bite, whatever you do, pilot it. Nobody wants to. If you built a new car, you would build one, put it on the track, optimize it, debug it, and then mass produce. They want to go from their paper plan when they get it to mass production, which will guarantee huge disruption in our country. Mr. Pro, yes. you earlier said that the Republicans right now have the best congressional minds for reducing the deficit. You also said there was a need to work on a bipartisan level, yes. and you also agreed that the Reagan trickle-down economics didn't work. Since the last decade has basically seen the congressional Democrats voting in lockstep with the Republicans, passing just about everything that, for instance, Bush put on the table except yeah. one, how would you give one specific thing 
to make those two parties come together, working to get us out of under under our deficit. Wonderful question. Well, Unfortunately, I, I have to interrupt you, Ross, and we'll give you an uninterrupted chance to answer this thoughtful question in just a moment. are clean, do you? Look closer. Rinse water can redeposit detergent and food particles on your dishes. Unless you use new Jet Dry to help rinse them away. New Jet Dry for shiny, clean dishes. Aquafresh. Get some brushing helps keep them brushing. You're about to see a whole new side of Effordent. Introducing two-layered Effordent. The white side helps clean and deodorize with Arm & Hammer baking soda. The blue side also has more mint to provide more freshening power than ever before. Making this the best Effordent ever. Introducing two-layered Effordent. Clean, fresh dentures come out of the blue. Have you been injured in a motorcycle accident? Hi, I'm Sam Kalig. You've heard of my law firm, Kalig & Handelman. Beautiful bikes, aren't they? But sometimes other drivers don't respect the rights of motorcyclists. At Kalig & Handelman, we know that motorcycle injuries are often serious and devastating. We're committed to getting you the maximum money and benefits in the minimum amount of time. If you've been injured in a motorcycle or any other type of accident, don't go it alone. Call Kalig & Handelman today. Channel 6 News. We give you something extra. Six on your side extras. For your family. Is Ohio wasting your tax dollars? I'm Deborah Countess. For your budget. I'm Bob Hetherington. This week we'll show you how to increase the value of your home. And For your life. I'm Tom Lawrence. Find out what's being done about traffic tie-ups in Columbus. When you want to know more, watch Channel 6 News. News with extras. Not just in May. Every day. Channel 6 News. On your side. To be part of the audience, please send a postcard to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. Yeah, well, uh, Ross, you wanted to say this question. The lady's question. Okay, repeat the question, please. Well, she... <laughs> I'm sorry, I've forgotten the question. Yes. I, I, Basically... Oh, excuse me, now that you've stood up, I remember the question. All right. <laughs> this is on the bipartisan coalition. See, the, there are two Republicans specifically that I've seen their cut, their spending cut plans. They have some really good plans. Right now, the way the system is working, the Democrats are just forcing their plan through without a lot of input from other people in the House and Senate. Senator Boren and Senator Danforth, Senator Coy, and that's a bipartisan group there, put in another bill the other day and said, wait a minute, let's take a close look at this. Let's try to do more cuts and less tax increases. All right, that's a great step in the right direction. Put together a team and get the best minds in the House and Senate, and there's some wonderful ones on this subject, and let's put together a plan. Now, wait just as taxpayers, if y'all like to have these folks wandering around at night without a flashlight just throwing stuff over the dashboard and you paying for it, fine. That's the way you're getting legislation now. What I'm saying, let's do it carefully, let's do it well. If you were going to make a cabinet, you would do it with great precision. Our tax bill should be the same thing. That's all I'm saying. Just like cutting a diamond, you do it carefully. Ross, as a graduate of the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis, you'll be pleased that I recognized f officer, a uh, crew from the finest carrier in the United States Navy, the John right. F. Kennedy. Right. Here they are. Mr. Perot, very simple. I've listened to a lot of different things from you today. I watch the press, I watch everything. When are you and the other people that are doing nothing but knocking the man, because we all voted for him, going to go down, knock on the door, and say, this is, we're here, we're here to help. Right. It's America. America. Everyone yeah. in America has to help everyone else. Ross Perot answers that question in just a moment. The minute... It's kind of funny if you're sitting at a restaurant and you go, what would you do if your parents embarrassed you like this? Oh, my God. 
on the next Mari, meet kids of all ages who can't take their parents anywhere. It's genetic that she aggravates us, and it's genetic that we embarrass her. Meet the shapely mom. She has a hard time keeping her clothes on. It's the main thing. And the dad whose best friend is plastic. Although she's a blob doll, she's expensive to buy clothes for. Embarrassed by their parents on the next Mari. The Maury Povich Show, today at 10 on 6 on your side. Here's Larry Posen, president of Beltone. My parents wanted to help people hear better. That's why they started Beltone over 50 years ago. Today, we continue the tradition of helping people at Beltone centers nationwide. Time and again, people come to us with the same concerns. I hear, but don't understand voices. People mumble. Beltone's 10-step test will tell you what you're hearing and what you're not. Call for this free brochure and a coupon for a free hearing test. If you do need hearing help, Belltone offers a tiny hearing aid with clear voice, a micro circuit that helps many people by reducing certain background noises. Choice is clear. If you or someone you love has trouble hearing clearly, come to Belltone. Outstanding technology, professional advice, an American company. Call 1-800-272-6500 for your free Belltone guide to better hearing and hearing test coupon. 1-800-272-6500. To get the best possible grocery prices, you could call the manufacturer directly. What is the best price you could give me on green beans? I don't think so. Or just let Kroger do it for you. Dollar, Our computer dollar, system dollar. locks on to every possible manufacturer price reduction. Look at the price on demand. That's a great price. Let's buy it. And those automatically become Kroger red tag price reductions. And that's how you save money at Kroger. Kroger Food and Drug. Easy to shop, easy to save. We are hooked on bonds. We are learning to read. This is the best class I've ever had in my life. It has to be due to hooked on phonics. The best investment you could make would be to buy this program. There is no better way to learn. And it's the best investment you will ever make. Call 1-800-ABCDEFG. Childhood anger sparks full-grown rage when adult siblings are still rivals. Nick Donahue. Help the president. Help him. Okay. Come up with a plan to get rid of foreign lobbyists. We'll be there in the millions. Come up with a plan get rid of PACs. We'll be there in the millions. Come up with a health care plan that'll work. We'll be there in the millions. Come up with a plan see come up with things that work and we'll be there we cannot back things that will damage the country and when you're putting things together in an irrational way in other words if you did your work on this carrier the way these programs are coming services together services provided and promotional fees paid by the following That's the